Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're going to be talking all about how to start a route window cleaning business, storefronts. If you haven't done storefronts or you do do storefronts, maybe there's a thing or two you could pick up. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. How's it going? Uh, thanks for checking us out. If you haven't listened or watched yet, I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you get something out of it. It's going to be a great episode, but there are hundreds of these episodes we have done. Uh, and it comes out every week on Friday on YouTube, SoundCloud, Google Play, everywhere podcasts are available. But if you want to see the amazing sticker wall, you could certainly check it out on YouTube. Uh, if you have watched episodes before, but more importantly, you've ordered your supplies through me, shameless plug, then what's up? You are a certified cool kid, uh, version one and uh, version two. You know how hard it is to point over your shoulder backwards? Uh, I thank you for letting me put those orders in for you. It is because of you that I get to wear fancy Sam's Club t-shirts. So thank you so much for everything you guys do. Uh, but really, thank you very much for letting me put your orders in. I am a rep with windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. It's my job. And I would love to put your orders in. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get credit for it. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. So let me know my number. Write it down. Save it. 862 312 2026. Big or small, it really does not matter on the size of the order. I just want to make sure that I am your rep. So please do do that. Um, and one other uh, shameless plug here. If you haven't yet gotten your hands on the American Window Cleaner Magazine, listen, you're listening to a podcast right now trying to better yourself in window cleaning. And this is what we do. We immerse ourselves in this awesome, awesome industry. So if you haven't gotten this hands on the uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine, go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. It's a monthly magazine, real magazine, shipped to your door with the sticker sheets. So you can have awesome buckets and trucks and toolboxes and everything else you can put stickers on. Go to that. American Window Cleaner Magazine. Anyway. So, like I said, today we are going to be talking about starting a storefront or route window cleaning company. Now, a lot of us do route and storefront, and a lot of us actually um, love it, and a lot of you actually hate it. Uh, I'm going to tell you first off, uh, unpopular opinion, I love route. I love route. By the way, there's three types of window cleaning that you can do. There's residential, commercial, or route. Those are the three. Now, for me, I always ran three of those. I've always done all of them. I sprinkled them in. Why? Because route fills in the slow parts. Frequency is there. With, there's no frequency anywhere else. Commercial fills in those big pockets before, and, uh, before spring and before fall. I would always fill my whole month with just all big, giant commercial projects. And residential is good for spring and fall itself. Like, having all three of them have a place. All of them. And they really do make a stronger, healthier company. Now, I always say I'm just some dummy with a microphone and um, a cardboard backdrop. But uh, if you decide you don't want to do route, if you decide you don't want to do commercial, or heck, some of you may not even do houses, that's cool. Like, this is your business. You can literally do anything you want. And it's absolutely okay because you are the boss, right? But I love route. The frequency side of route is absolutely amazing. I love the frequency side of route because nothing else you have. Houses, we have houses. Some houses go every three weeks we have a house. But most, you know, a lot do go every month. You have some that go quarterly, a lot that go six months, right? But you don't have weekly houses. The house that goes every week, right? The frequency isn't there. So you have these big pockets you have to fill before the house comes around again. Well, with route, for the most part, you're going to have it done every week or every other week, right? So hypothetically, if you got one person dedicated to route, you have to fill up two weeks of route. If you could fill up two weeks of route, you filled up an entire year of route for one person. Like that's what I'm talking about frequency wise. 
And no, I don't do contracts. Um, if you ever have questions, you can always shoot me a text. Uh, but I don't uh, do contracts personally. I don't do them for route. I do agreements just basically with the price and everything, but um, just so we're on the same page. I don't do contracts though. So people go, well, it's not really guaranteed. That's true. But I would have to have hundreds of jobs drop me in order to, to lose that money, right? So frequency side of route is absolutely amazing. The other side of it is that you can do route if it's raining, you can do route if it's snowed, if it's snowing, if it if it's supposed to rain, if it it's just done regularly no matter what. And I'm telling you, as somebody from Wisconsin, if you can't tell by my talking funny, uh it's absolutely amazing to have that frequency. So think about route. If you haven't done route, think about it. It's something that I really, really like. And I think if you do it right, it's a huge moneymaker. And there's also companies, I know you guys have heard of Fish. And not every Fish franchise is as, as high on that. But um, there are a lot of companies that do just route window cleaning. And usually, one of the problems, I guess, is that when somebody decides they're going to be a window cleaner... They tend to go for route first because they're like, oh, I could just get all those stores, right? So there is a little bit of competition, a little bit tighter for money, but we're going to talk about all of that. And route is absolutely amazing. So if you haven't thought about it yet, do it. If you're looking to start a company for the first part, remember, we want to do all three, but route is a very big key. Now, with route, there is only really one way to close route. One of the other kind of drawbacks, you cannot do direct mail. I mean, you always can, but it sucks. Don't do it. You can't do um, uh, calls or cold calls or any of that stuff because they get bombarded. You have to do door knocking, which means you have to go to the location. Now, you're competing against a bucket bob. If you don't know what a bucket bob is, that's just a person who... You know, maybe he's doing window cleaning for beer money, or they're just walking around, or hey, I need a cheeseburger, whatever they're doing, right? So you're going to have those, but you're not one of those. You're not a bucket bob. You're an actual company. So right away, you're not competing against them. Remember that. But they're already kind of souring an experience. And what happens is, is the business owner of a place is going to automatically most of the time, like, oh, no, we're good, we got some, because they're used to having people bombard them with that. So there's a couple tips to kind of get through, but you always have to door knock. You always have to door knock and go in. Now, the problem with door knocking is, is that you are going to not get as much done, uh, because eventually, even if your area is, you know, thick with stores, you're going to eventually run out of the stores, get in your car and have to go to the next place and look for areas and chest areas and all that fun stuff. So it's not like you can do an ADDM campaign where you push one button and you send out a thousand pieces, right? But let's use this to our advantage. If you are doing door knocking on storefronts, which we have to do, why not dress awesome? Let's look really well. I mean, let's look like we are put together. Polo shirt, nice collar, uh, done hair, looking like you're good, clean shaven. I mean, everything that you can do. So when you walk into a place, they go, oh, this isn't just some vagrant off the street. This isn't a guy doing it for beer money. This is the guy's company. Nice clipboard, right? Maybe a, a, a faint spray of cologne. Everything that you can do to give that first impression when you walk through, people go, wow, this guy, is a, he's an owner of a company, Right? I had a uh, window cleaner who was testing that. He was actually uh, our salesman for a while, and he tested different uh, apparel, and he got more on-site closes or more connections dressed nice. Uh, if he walked in in a full suit, they didn't talk to him as well, but if he went in in just like really nice khaki pants, that was the best he could do. Because it felt like he was down to earth, but he wasn't some corporate stiff. He wasn't, you know, it really felt like it was a perfect match. So make sure you're dressing good. Make sure that that door knocking is going to be worth it. Door knocking when you're in, I'm going to tell you my process real quick. Everybody's process is a little bit different, but this is what I do. I have a half sheet of paper. And by the way, it's been a while since I've had this stuff. It's, I've given it to the guy who bought my business. Um, but, uh, I had a half sheet of paper and all it did was have the, uh, name and an address 
a date, and then a rep. So I take down a little line there. These are carbon copied forms. You can get them from Steve at Cross Printing. Um, they do awesome WCR printing. And then I just had a few services. I had outs, in and outs, pressure washing, and other. That's what I'd have, right? Um, and out of those, I would always do just the outs first. The rest of it was more to let them know the other things I did. Because we're getting route, we're just trying to go boom, boom, in, out, out, right? So what I would do is I would go in, and as I'm walking, and I have my clipboard with all my documents, I had that. I'm already writing down the store name, and if there's a phone number on the door, which there always always is, I'm writing the phone number down. I'm counting the windows, right? You're at that $1.50 a pane or whatever. Again, people always yell at me for pricing. Um, but whatever you're at for your dollar a pane, $2 a pane, whatever it is. Um, writing that down, getting that down, and then I always sign it under the bottom, which is the signature from the XYZ company and signature from the uh, uh, customer, client, whatever you call them. And as I walk in, I'm like, hey, it's Jersey with XYZ window cleaning. We're just in the area. We clean uh, this place, this place, and this place. Always name drop. Uh, I just wanted to drop off a quick estimate, some information on our company. And uh, I just wanted to talk to the owner or manager. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm the owner. I'm the manager. Uh, they're not in whatever you say. Okay. Well, here's the information. I hand them over <clears throat> a half sheet of paper already filled out with a business card and a flyer. A uh, trifle brochure. Just enough information that they're going to take it and keep it, but enough information that they don't get the chance to say no. They just don't, right? So I hand them all the information, and from that, they can decide if they want to do it. There's a sneeze. Every week, I sneeze. I don't think I sneezed in your ear. I'm sorry. If I did, I'll check to edit, but I'm not going to edit the video. <laughs> ah, anyway, so... What I do is I hand it all to them and give it to them. They go, oh, yeah, oh, that's nice. Nice. I go, oh, so, uh, you know, are you getting rid of cleaning done now or are you guys doing it yourself? I'm trying to get that conversation going, right? If they're like, oh, you know, we have somebody do it now. It's oh, great. Cool. Very good. Our price is pretty comparable. I'd, I'd love to, to earn your business. And they're like, yeah, you know, they're pretty close. They're good. You know, very seldom do people say, if they say they're uh, too much or something, oh, that's not a problem. Well, let me know if anything changes, right? Because I'm not competing with everybody. I know what I charge and I know what we should be charging. I'm not going to charge less. It's called stepping over dollars to make pennies just because somebody else has it, right? Now, with that being said, if I'm in an area and I have all of the stuff and I know that if I pick up this one more job, it's going to really lock down that area, maybe I'll be willing to deal with. Because again, the heavier and thicker the route is that you have, the more you're actually going to make. So it's definitely, definitely a way to go that way. But it's different for everybody. So you want to uh, make sure that you're right on the cusp of being the right price but also not too far out. Now, some of you say, well, I do route, but I don't charge any different than houses. You probably don't have route, right? You have a couple route stores that they just haven't gotten anybody else. Like route, because of the frequency, you're cleaning a week's worth of dirt. You can't charge them what you would a house, which you're doing 10 times better, and you're doing it uh, more detail-oriented, and you're cleaning a year's worth of dirt. You just can't. But it doesn't. that's not what the goal is. The goal is to have a route so that if you can stop get out of the truck and you're in one area for an hour, just cleaning glass, cleaning glass, cleaning glass, get in the truck or the next part, cleaning glass, cleaning. Like the thicker that route is, the more money you're going to make, right? If I can get done 10 jobs before I get back in the truck, I'm going to up my hourly rate because now I'm just cleaning a ton of windows. And that's how you start doing really well in, in route. When you start route, it's always going to lose you money for the first few because you're driving across town for 20 bucks and you're like, ah, this is stupid. You have to just go hard. Go hard and keep at it. Once you start building route, they'll be your route customers for a really long time. You get frequency. It's super, super awesome. But you have to get to that point, right? The big thing is how I hand everything to them. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm not giving them an option to say no. If they do say no, which they might, they actually have to get out of the trend of conversation. If I walk in, by the way, I'll explain trend of conversation. If you walk into a place and I say, hey, uh, nice to meet you. Can I get you an estimate for window cleaning? 
Well, their instant defense could be no. No, we're good. Thank you. I don't want to be bothered. I'm ending the conversation. My arms are crossed. Right? If I say, hey, can I get you a, 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 an estimate? And they do say yes. And I go, oh, great. Do you want inside and outside or just outside? Do you, do you, want, do you want me to do uh, just the outside? If they answer that one, do you, do you want me to do coolers? If you're asking yes and no questions, the option is going to have no as an option. If I walk in and I say, hey, my name is Jersey from XYZ, again, the whole spiel, we clean this, this, and this, and this. I just wanted to drop off this paperwork with the bid, a bid for window cleaning so you knew where our price is stacked up. And I hand it to him. I didn't ask. I, by doing that, have gotten my prices and bid 100% of the jobs. If you ask a yes or no question, their instant events could be no. I leave open-ended questions. I don't hand it to them and go, how does that look? Did you want us to start? I don't ask any of that. I hand it to them just like that. just wanted to let you check out our prices. I didn't ask a question, which means there is no lead to the conversation, right? I gave them the information. Normal conversation ensues, right? There is an awkward moment when no one talks, so people fill voids with talking. That's why when you're public speaking, there's a lot of ums and uhs and whatever, because they're filling that space. See how awkward that was? You feel like somebody needs to be talking. That's how it works. So putting it out there, not giving one yes or no, they then have to go against the grain to tell you a no or whatever they decide to say. So what that's doing is, it's getting rid of the instant defense no. Right? If you're walking out of Lowe's or Home Depot and somebody walks up to you with a clipboard, hey, I just was wondering if I had a, could take a minute of your time. 90% of people are going to be like, no, thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Have a great day. You don't even know. They're, they're, they could have been like, hey, I just need you to uh, uh, get a free vehicle. I was going to give you a free uh, uh, truck. You have no idea. Your instant defense is no. That's route. Anything. Any questions you ask. Not asking a yes or no is not leading the conversation to allow a yes or no. Now, if I asked you, hey, so, uh, yeah, I was wondering if you were uh, more comfortable with booking on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Which day of the week works better for you? You don't go, no. That's not where the conversation goes. The conversation is a Tuesday or Wednesday. If neither of those days work for you, you would be like, oh, uh, actually, you know, uh, Tuesday, like you have to go out of the norm to explain that. You can't just say no, which is that defense, stop conversation, end things, make me go back to my comfort level, right? So remember, don't give chances for no's. Give them all the information so they have it. When I give them that information, I want to get the person's name off of a name tag or a card or whatever. I want to get all that information and I want to let them know that I'm following up. Now, I'm going to get to that part in a little bit, but always get their information because again, these are just leads. You're not going to close a lot instantly. It all comes down to follow up. So I'm going to get that and they're like, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, manager's not around, but I'll leave it with, them. oh, cool. What's their name? I'll uh, check back with them in a, a week or two. Nonchalant. Um, there's no force. There's nothing. I didn't ask, oh, could I get their information? That's a yes or no question. I said, oh, what is their name and phone number? Do they have a card? I'll just take that if it's easier. Leading the conversation to not allow a no doesn't mean that no's aren't there. It doesn't mean you're being pushy. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that the defense no is not going to be given, right? So having that all out there, collecting all of that, that is where it is. Another big thing is is that people always want to go on and go, hey, so how often do you get this done? Like once a month? People who have routes, and I'm talking to you if you have a route existing, and you go, oh, all my route is a month. I can't get anybody to go under that. It's the way you're asking. You've done that because people are not instantly going to say once a month, right? You may get that, but that's not going to be instant once a month unless you led the conversation to allowing once a month. Getting a higher frequency is going to yield you more money. If I could do all of my jobs every week, I could charge less 
because I'm only cleaning a work, week's worth of dirt off. If I do it every two weeks, I have to charge double the amount of work. I'm not going to charge double, but in your brain, remember that. But with that being said, is if I could do everything in a week, all I have to do is fill up a week, make that really, really tight route, and I'm making a ton of money. Because it's every single week. They're already clean. I can just blast through them. Right? I'm going for every week or every two weeks. And again, what day works best of the week for you? Wednesdays or Tuesdays? I'm not asking route that. I'm not going to even tell them, ask them dates. Because it's on my calendar, my schedule. I'm making my route work. But what I will say is, all right, I put that down for uh, once a week on there, pricing-wise. Uh, it's a little bit more if you want to go every two weeks, but we can do that too. Well, then their option is going to be a week or every two weeks. They have to get out of the instant no. They have to get out of the less pain, comfort level thing and go, ah, oh, you know, neither of those works for me. I'm looking for once a quarter. Ah, uh, I really do once a month. Right? I always say, too, if somebody does come in and go, oh, you know what, our last guy does it once a month. Is there any way to do that? I said, uh, we can. It would actually be every four weeks because we're on a weekly schedule, but we just want to make sure we're keeping up with these windows a lot better. A lot can happen in four weeks. We want to make sure that everything is taken care of. If you're every week and somebody eggs you, you know you're only a couple days away from getting cleaned, uh, and we do emergency service. So you're always going to have nice windows. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I'll let them know, too. When somebody walks into your store, the first thing they do is look at your windows. They look through your windows at everything you have here. you got these really nice windows, really nice product, really nice storefront. If it looks dirty, they're going to assume everything's dirty. So unfortunately, we want to make sure to keep up with that. Lead a conversation to how it works, where you want it to go. Now, that's not being pushy. I haven't told them there's not an option for once a month because we do have a couple still, and I'm talking maybe a couple, that do once a month. I hate it. It's Every four weeks doesn't make sense. That's too long. I think we do a restaurant that uh, ended up wanting to cancel. We got them to go every month. Anyway, what I want to do is every two weeks. Uh, that's going to be easier for me. Now, remember, we're doing weekly schedule, not monthly, because a month can be any range you can have five weeks in a month screws everything up if you're doing monthly if you do it every two weeks then i mean every two weeks on a tuesday i'm here on that block every two weeks on a wednesday i'm here now in those two weeks every two weeks i'm there that means that every week i'm there if i need to be every two weeks i'm there on a wednesday every month is every four weeks on a wednesday like i can plan that so even a month works the same that means if i do uh, you know, X, Y, Z, and I do A, B, C, all those two places right next to each other. That means if one's monthly and one is every two weeks, I'm still doing them together every single time. As opposed to, well, I always do this one on the 15th. I always do this one on the first. Like I always, I always do this one, uh, one, you know, two weeks. And then two weeks later I do this, like doing that, your schedule is going to get screwed up. So do it by a weekly schedule. It's always going to be better that way. And remember, we're trying to pack that in, right? So another thing that I'm going to do to pack it in, make things faster, faster is efficiency, efficiency equals money, is I'm going to have a card on file. A lot of times they want to till pay, and I'm cool with that too. But I let them know that when I get there to do the job, I drop the envelope off with the invoice. I'm like, hey, I'm here to do the windows. I'm going to get started. I'll leave this here. Just put the money in the envelope, and I'll pick it up uh you know, that way if you're with a customer or anything, I can just pick that money up. Now I go back out, I start doing the windows. When I'm done, I just go in that envelope sitting there with the money and grab it and go. If you wait until after it's done or you're billing them, then you're not going as fast and efficient as possible. I want to collect all that money. Remember, if I get to do the work and collect the money then and there, I don't have to pay somebody to collect the money later, right? Efficiency. I want everything I can be to be fastest that I can be. I want to make sure that all my bucket, I have tons of towels, I have everything I could possibly need. I don't have to go back to the truck so I can go wham, bam, 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 and go all the way down the line. That's how route makes money. I have route guys that were making 80 bucks an hour. That's not what I paid them, you know, production. Now when people are like, yeah, route for me is like $20. Your, your route is too loose, uh, which means you just have to build it, or your prices are too loose. Or you're not fast enough, you're not you're losing efficiencies. Listen, you have 60 minutes in an hour. And those 60 minutes, what can get accomplished in those 60 minutes 
equates to what your hourly rate of production is. Now, if in that 60 minutes it takes you two minutes to walk back to the truck, now all of a sudden you're only doing 58 minutes. So even if you made the same amount, now you're doing it in a bigger amount of time. You only have 58 minutes to actually get the work done. You're trying to do it in an hour. Now if you do that every job you have to walk back to the truck, or you're sitting there for five minutes waiting for somebody to pay you, that's five minutes you're making zero dollars. Just like your fuel economy, right? When you have minutes of bad fuel economy, it ruins your whole average. That's what we're looking for, efficiency. So get that card on file, get a till pay ready, Make sure that you let them know before so that when you're done, you just pick it up and go. You only make money once your route is tight. Now, the biggest thing about this is you have to understand that you will not make money right away. If I start and say, hey, I'm starting a route window cleaning business. I got my first job. You're going to lose your bum on that job. You are. Because there's nothing around there. You're driving wherever you are to go to that job, and it's not going to be a much. Not going to be a lot. But when you start building everything around, by the way, when you build a route, you go to clean that job and you sell everybody right next to it. I have places that I've gone in for two years every single two weeks. Every two weeks I'm there. Hey, just wanted to say what's up, guys. You guys still doing good? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, they know because guess what? As soon as their employee person doesn't show up, I show up and go, hey, I'm in the neighborhood. I just want to say what's up, guys. Let me know again if anything. Hey, actually, uh, our guy never showed up last week. Would you mind? Yeah, absolutely. You still have the paperwork? I don't have it on me, but if you got that paperwork, I'll sign off on it. Now, I still have the notes. I still am following up. I know all that stuff. Guess who they're sending it to is me. It doesn't matter if somebody new goes in there because they're like, this dude's here all the time. He's always checking up. This is the guy's business. Remember, hustle is appreciated, right? So that is a big one. Uh, You only make money when your route is tight. And the biggest, biggest takeaway from route is there's a 90% rule. And it's actually could be higher than that. But the 90% rule is 10% of your jobs are getting signed on the spot. 90% of them will get closed in follow-up. Unlike any other service that we do, follow-up is by far the most important thing you could possibly do for jobs. Absolutely. Because again, remember, when you walk in, even if you look nice, they got that no defense. Right? If I end the conversation, I'll remember, I always leave it open. Oh, what's their name or number? I'll I'll get back. I'll check back with you in a week or two. Great. Ends the conversation. I'm not going to be pushy. I'm not going to leave a bad impression. I'm going to leave. Right? Maybe they're busy doing something. But guess what? That slip I'm taking back to my tickler folder, which, by the way, is like an accordion style kind of folder. I'm writing all the notes on the back of that paper and I'm dropping it in one week from that day. I call him back up. Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ. Uh, I was in there a week ago, actually, today, and I just wanted to call and follow up with anything, see if you had a chance to look over the bid for window cleaning. Almost always. Oh, um, yeah, actually, no. Uh, you know what? I forgot all about it. Let me. Because now all of a sudden their brain goes, I just I just let them, you know, I got rid of them. That's what I did. They said it somewhere. They didn't even think about it. But now all of a sudden you're calling them back. You know the dates. You know things like, you know, who they are, their name, the phone number, all that stuff. They're like, oh, man, yeah. Because remember, every job does th- one of three things. Every single route. They either do the windows themselves, they pay somebody else to do the windows, or they don't do the windows. And the third one they don't do very often. So people go, well, what if, you know, they have somebody else? Of course they do. Of course they do. They have somebody else. We're not purposely stealing from somebody else. Obviously, if you're starting route or doing any type of route, you're going to take work from other people. That's just kind of how it goes. But with with your hustle, with your um, uh, determination, they're going to see what you are and what you're offering, and they will switch when it's the time. It may be because the other company did something wrong. It may just be because it's time to change. Maybe the other company retired. Follow-up is the key to all of that. Because if I follow up in a week and they go, no, you know what, we're still, uh, we're going to pass for right now. You know, we, we have somebody we're really happy with. Not a problem. I'll check back with you in like a month or a couple months. Next time I'm in the area, I'll check back with you and we'll see where you're at. And if anything ever changes, you got my number. I am going to go in there. Even when somebody says that, I'm going to go in there Next time I'm in the area with just a business card. Hey, 
How are you, Tom? I just wanted to say what's up. Uh, make sure everything's going good with your windows. Are you guys are still happy with who you have? Yep, yep, everything's good. Cool. I'll leave my card. N nothing big. Uh, you know I'm in the area all the time. We'll talk again. So nonchalant. But I'm going to be in there the next time. Right? I'm going to continue to go in there because eventually that person is going to be like, this guy wants this. This guy wants this. They're not going to hire somebody else, else if they know you want that. And that's what it is. So if you haven't done storefront, if you haven't done route, make sure you're doing route. It takes a bit to build, but once it builds, man, is it awesome. I had full time a guy that just did route. That's it. Just in a truck. His stuff, that's all he did. You start getting a bunch of those, and all of a sudden now you have, I mean, I know guys that run routes. They have 10 crews that do just routes. That's 10 crews out there working every single day. Regardless if it's snowing or raining or drought or economy or uh, fill in the blank. So make sure to do that. Anyway, I'm a Jersey with windowcleaner.com. I'd love to be your rep. Really shameless plug, but do save my number. Let me put orders in for you, please. <laughs> please. Uh, it's 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. I'm your only, the only Jersey in your phone. I swear. I must be. And again... You listen to this whole episode, why not get a magazine also? With the pictures and the articles and the stickers and the everything that comes with the American Window Cleaner magazine, go out and get it. It's absolutely amazing. At least my mom says so. Uh, and it helps me out, by the way. Uh, I own the magazine. So, go check it out. It's something super, super awesome. A ton of awesome journalists, so check it out. By the way, thank you very much for watching. And again, until next week... Go out there and get some storefront, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.